Number nine, the function f of t equals negative five t squared plus 20t plus 60 models the approximate height of an object t seconds after it is launched. How many seconds does it take the object to hit the ground? So we're looking for time and we want to know when it hits the ground. Now any question where we're dealing with throwing something in the air and gravity taking over, um, the neat thing about that is the x-axis represents the ground. So x is our ground, our x-axis, so it's going to hit the ground at, at two spots for our actual graph. Now in this case I know our y-intercept is 60 because if I plugged in a 0 for t um, in both of these instances that would be nothing plus 60 so I know that's my y-intercept at 60 so technically it's only going to hit the ground once but there are going to be two solutions because for a quadratic it continues on in both directions so it goes forever that way and forever this way so a quadratic is always going to make a u-shape but really it's only going to cross at this one instance on the ground so the object could have been thrown from the top of a building and then it's hitting the ground later so the object is going to be released, it's going up, 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 and then gravity takes it over and all of a sudden it starts going down and it's accelerating down um, until it hits the ground right here. And that's what we want for that. That's going to be the zero of the function. The zero of the function is where does the graph cross the x-axis? So that's what we're looking for. So to factor it, I am just going to set that function um, equal to zero and I am going to look for a shortcut to start off. So look at negative 5, 20, and 60. Can we break that down so it's not as um, threatening? Because remember we don't have a calculator on this question. So I'm going to try to factor out whatever I can and what will go into every one of those numbers. And I don't like for my lead coefficient to be negative. That makes it harder to factor. So I'm going to factor out a negative 5 because negative 5 will go into everything. So negative 5 times what gives me that? That would be t squared. Negative 5 times what gives me 20t? A negative times a negative, so that would be minus 4t. And then negative 5 times what gives me 60? That would be a negative 12. And again, we're setting this equal to 0 in order to solve it. Now that negative 5, honestly, we just totally got rid of it because we don't care about it anymore. And we're going to factor this, so multiply your outside numbers, so that coefficient's 1. So 1 times negative 12 is negative 12. And then we're thinking um, what can add up to that middle coefficient of negative 4 and, and multiplies to give me the negative 12. So we can just write our factors off to the side. So the factors of 12 are going to be 3 and 4, um, 1 and 12, 2 and 6. And which one of those are 4 apart? And I'm looking at 2 and 6. And since it's multiplying to give me a negative, we know that 1 needs to be positive, And you guessed it, the other one needs to be negative. So if I made it negative 2 and 6, that would give me a positive 4, I need a negative. So I need to make the 6, the bigger number, negative. So it would be negative 6 and positive 2. And then if you'll recall, we write that lead coefficient, which is 1, on the bottom. And that's going to tell us the coefficient of our variable. So, so that 1 is going to be written here. It's 1x is what that means. That negative 6 tells us we're going to subtract 6. That's our first factor. The other factor, the 1, tells us it's going to be a 1x. And the 2 tells us it's a plus 2 because it's a positive 2. So we essentially have x minus 6 times x plus 2 equals 0. And now all we have to do is set them equal to 0. And after you do that, you just add 6 to both sides. And x is 6 and subtract 2 to both sides and x is negative 2. 
Now, since we're talking time, we need to use our brain here. How many seconds does it take it to hit the ground? Um, since we had a negative 2 for our second solution, negative 2, hopefully in your mind, doesn't make any sense because that's before you threw the ball or, or the object. The only, the only thing that makes sense is our positive answer. So the answer would be 6 seconds. Number 10, 2 times Antonio's age plus 3 times Sarah's age equals 34. Sarah's age is also 5 times Antonio's age. How old is Sarah? Well, we have a couple unknowns here. We have Antonio. We have no clue how old Antonio is, and we don't know how old Sarah is, and it just wants to know how old is Sarah. So I'm going to let my two unknowns be A for Antonio, and I don't like using the letter S, so I'm just going to pick um, R for Sarah. I'll just pick out the R in her middle, the middle part of her name. So 2 times Antonio's age would be 2 times A, and it says plus, so plus, 3 times, so 3 times Sarah, I called Sarah R, and then it says equals 34, and if it would have said is, remember the word is also means equals. And then it gives me one more relationship, so that tells me I'm going to have two equations. Sarah's age and Sarah's R is, that tells me, equals five times Antonio's age, Antonio's A. So it's five times A. So we do have two relationships relating these two variables, or two equations. And the best way to do this, this is going to be a systems of equations. And the best way to do this one, since we already have a variable that's by itself, or solve for, is just to use substitution. So using st substitution, we're going to plug in 5a for every place that we see in R. So I'm going to rewrite that top equation as 2a plus 3. And instead of putting an R, I'm going to plug in my 5a. So it's 3 times 5a equals 34. And now we only have one variable. That's the neat thing about substitution. Um, you can put it all in terms of one variable and just solve for that variable. So 3 times 5a gives me 15a. Bring everything else down. And we have a two-step equation. Our first step now is to combine our like terms. 2a plus 15a is 17a equals 34. And our final step is to divide by 17. And a is going to give us 2. So that means Antonio is two years old. Antonio is just a little toddler. I can definitely relate to that. So now let's look at Sarah. How can we find Sarah? Well, we have a nice relationship right here. And we already know what one of our unknowns is, so all we need to do is plug it back in. So we would get R equals... 5 times A, and A is 2. So 5 times 2 gives us 10. And that, So Sarah is 10 years old, Antonio is 2 years old, and we are almost done. We just need to make sure we've answered the question. So which answer are we looking for? Is it 2 or 10? I'm going to look back at my question. It says, how old is Sarah? We let R stand for Sarah. So Sarah is going to be 10 years old. All right, great job. Thanks for listening.